We're going to talk today about a season that we're entering. It is the Christmas season. And for those of you that have just joined us, maybe for the first time, maybe you don't know what you're about to hear. But at First Harvest Ministries, we made a decision nine years ago to never celebrate Christmas again. Now, you're talking to a man that was Mr. Christmas himself, okay? I loved Christmas. I loved chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Oh, if you wanted to get me in my zone, just get chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Uh, <clears throat> you know, it's just like the food message we teach about what we eat. What people need, you know the way you can know this is a message from God, Yahweh, and not me? It's because every unclean food is my favorite. I'm from Louisiana, the home of crawfish, the home of crawdad, the home of catfish, the home of shrimp, the home of everything unclean. Okay? And I could cook it all like you couldn't imagine. So I did not go looking for this message. This message came looking for me. When it comes to Christmas, we are going to have some real talk here today because we are all humans and we are all connected to tradition. We, we're just connected. You grow up a certain way, and that is your comfort zone. That is your familiarity. So I want you to know today, if you're struggling with Christmas, you'll find no judgment here. You'll find no condemnation here. You won't find any super spiritual people that, that we're going to act like you shouldn't be bothered at all. We're not, we're not those people. We know what you're going through. We've been there. And it's an, it's an addiction. You're going to go through a detox for a year or two. Okay? It is You are detoxing this world out of your mind. And with that detox comes some uh, low points to where your human nature is going to crave those things that you miss. You know what? It's okay. We got you. And today, I'm going to just be real with you. We're going to bring you an understanding of Christmas. Now, if you're watching and maybe you still celebrate Christmas, welcome. You're welcome here. Maybe you're trying to decide. Most of you have already decided, but maybe you're like, you know what? I hear what you're saying over here, but you know, I get you. Okay. Cause I did the, but you know, for the first three years after I got the revelation. All right. So I've been to the, but you know, but you know, I, I've done it all. I've done all the butts. I'm the butt expert. I got the butts. I, I said every butt out there. Okay. But, but, but. And finally, you get to the point where you just say, but nothing, but nothing. Okay. Just, but nothing. <laughs> All right. So we're, we're going to do three things today. First of all, I'm going to take you through the journey and teach you why we don't celebrate. Then I'm going to come back and give you some practical ways to navigate through Christmas. And then I'm going to take questions. So let's get started. 
There is a way I want to explain Christmas. I have really struggled this week about today's class because most of you watching have already watched everything you think there is to watch about Christmas and it being pagan. And you, most of you have watched Truth and Tradition by Jim Staley. If you've watched Truth and Tradition, you have all the knowledge. There's, not, there's no more knowledge I can add to that. Okay? Many of you have watched, how many of you, by showing of hands, has watched YouTube videos of why Christmas is pagan? Let me see your hands. All right? So y'all pretty much got your knowledge down pat. Okay. Let me explain what knowledge without wisdom is. A joke. You've got all this knowledge. I guarantee you somebody right now can tell me exactly why a Christmas tree is, is sinful. You, you know that knowledge, okay? I get it. Do you know why the wreath is sinful? Yes, you've got that knowledge. So my job today, except for one or two of you that may still need all that knowledge, my job today is to get past the knowledge. And to make sure that you don't turn Christmas into something that you're against. Because if you don't understand what I'm going to teach you today, then Christmas just becomes another religious thing that you're against. You become legalistic. Well, I don't celebrate Christmas. Okay, got it. How dare you celebrate Christmas? Ah, be careful with that one. Uh, become a legalist over Christmas. Now, no one stands harder against Christmas than yours truly. I'm proud to say that. But I'm also proud the Father has given me wisdom with that knowledge. And wisdom is understanding. There's a difference in knowing that Christmas is pagan. That's great. But do you know why Yahweh hates Christmas? I really want you to think about that today. I'm not going to get into all, I'm going to talk about trees a little bit. And I'm going to touch on those things, but that's not where I need you to get today. I need you to know somewhere deep in your heart, somewhere deep down, why your heavenly father, what is his big deal about an innocent little holiday? What is, you see, your job is to take on the heart of your father. And if you don't know why he hates the holidays, then you will hate the holidays without knowing why you hate them. And if you don't know why you hate them, then you become just, for example, when I was growing up and someone asked me, in the church I grew up in, we couldn't wear short sleeve shirts. All our sleeves was too, well, I still, I still don't wear short sleeve shirts, not for religious reasons, but it's my culture and tradition I got used to. And besides, I don't have big muscular arms to show off like Shane Sewell does. So, you know, so, you know, same reason I don't wear cut off shirts. Praise the Lord. But how people will say, well, why don't you do this? And I would just say, well, it's against my religion. That's not an answer. That's a cop-out. You should never not celebrate Christmas because it's against your religion. I really want you to hear me today now because you're fixing to enter the next week where your emotions is going to be in a mess because you're human, okay? You've got to figure out underneath the paganism, what is it? Why are you against 
Christmas. The only way you can ever be against Christmas and be okay with it, you've got to get under the surface and find out why your father hates it. And then when you identify with his heart, then you will get his heart. And I'm going to explain it like this now so that you can understand. Let me ask a question. Brother Byron from Frisco, Texas, unmute yourself. I'm going to put you on the, come on down. All right, let's do it. Brother Byron. Well, you may not can answer it. I hope you can't answer it. I hope so too. So, because I don't want you to answer it from personal experience, but just answer it from a general understanding of, of life. What happens to a man once he starts flirting with another woman that is not his wife? Tell me what happens to the wife as he begins chasing someone else. Hmm. Um, just so you know, I don't have experience in this, but uh, praise God, praise, praise God. Lord. Speak, speak generally. <laughs> um, a man would probably, well, the woman would feel, oh, woman's intuition would, would pick it up. Right. Would pick it up and then she would want to, she would question herself and guilt. Um, Correct. And, and how would she? And how would she begin to feel? I tell you what. How would that man begin to feel towards the wife? Um, dominant. Um, in a way that's not. I mean, we're supposed to lead by serving. We're supposed to serve her. So right. We would be. We would not be doing that. We would be dominant. In, in a very uh, evil way. Absolutely. Great answer. Now, let me just add to that answer some, some more things that I'd like for everybody to consider. Most affairs don't happen overnight. They happen gradually. And the way they happen is you get enamored. You get enamored by something more exciting than at marriage. Okay? You make a covenant with your wife and your husband, and that covenant is solid. But here, you know, after a while, that covenant, you know, might become mundane to you, and here comes a little filly outside of the covenant that's more attractive maybe at a, in that moment, right place, right time, more exciting, more flippity, more light, more carefree. You know, she's not talking to you about the bills that are due this week. She wants to talk about world travel, you know, <laughs> and all of a sudden the other woman becomes more exciting and you no longer are enamored by the husband or the wife of your covenant. Now, I'm going to answer the question, Dave, why Yahweh hates the holidays. And I hope by now you're beginning to start maybe picking up what I'm putting down because the moment you find another celebration or another girlfriend or another place to divert your attention to, the moment that happens, the covenant begins to be ignored and your heart is drawn away from the covenant of life to the covenant of death. Okay, I want you to listen to why your father hates worldly 
holidays. The holidays that are connected to the other woman or the other husband in our case. Okay? I want to read to you. Let's go, Elder Morgan. Let's open our Bibles. 1 Corinthians 11, 2 through 4. Now, when we read this, we have to ask a real question. What is the look that people give you when you tell them why you don't celebrate Christmas? Have you ever gotten that look like this that sort of like, oh, <laughs> like, are you even serious? In other words, what's the word I'm looking for? They insult your intelligence. In other words, it's, it's they feel sorry for you almost like, oh, are, are, you, are you serious? Like that. You know, and, and if you're not careful, you'll give Yahweh the same look about a little holiday. I mean, really? I mean, are y'all really going to swallow a gnat? You know, or strain at a gnat and swallow a camel? How many ever heard this thing, this feeling of like, are you even serious? To where... You're taking something that's so little and, and making something so big out of it. Well, see, there's a scripture in the Bible that said it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. What seems little to this world is really big to our God. Let's read it, shall we? Tell us where you're reading, Brother Morton. 1 Corinthians 11, 2 through 4. Let's read. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the traditions as I delivered them to you. Now hold but on. Hold on. Who is he writing to? The brethren. Not the world, but remnant Israel. He's not writing to natural Israel or anybody else. He's writing to remnant Israel. And he says, I have handed you a set of tradition or customs. They have come there only for you. They're not for the world. <laughs> They're for you to keep. Now read. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Yahshua, the Messiah. And the head of every woman is the man. And the head of... Yahshua, the Messiah, is Yahweh. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. First Corinthians 11, 2 through 4. Yes, sir. Okay, keep reading. That was 4. That was 4. Okay, something, something is not right. Give me one second. Maybe it's uh, 2 Corinthians. Hold tight. Yeah, I think that's probably it. Brian Magellus. Yeah, Brian yeah, Magellus. read that. All right, 2 Second Corinthians, Corinthians 11, 2 through 4. For I am yes. jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. All right, listen carefully. Paul says, you have a covenant already that covenant comes with customs and traditions you have a covenant with a husband already you are already spoken for you are already engaged to the messiah. who is the messiah the word yeshua there is a certain group of people that are in a covenant with the customs of the word, not the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. See, if you don't get the real thing, you'll get distracted by, I don't do Christmas. Well, no, it ain't even about that. In fact, I don't do Christmas. I just do a covenant is what I do. 
I do a covenant. Come on. And, and unfortunately, Christmas is not in that covenant. Okay. So, so see, it's not that you don't do Christmas. It's not that you don't do an affair with another man or another woman. It's the fact that you do the husband or the wife. Well, they didn't come out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, All right. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's, it's not that I don't do an affair because if I'm, oh Lord, I gotta, I've got to speak plain. We got children. If I'm, if I'm doing the. Yeah. Okay. If I'm doing them, I won't be doing them. You got me? Hallelujah. All right. Paul says you have a covenant. That covenant's Torah. Okay? You are in a covenant with a husband. And he said that husband is jealous over you. And if you're going to stand in front of a tree and tell your children that their blessings is coming down a chimney instead of from a place called the throne of Yahweh, I'm jealous over that. It's not part of our covenant. Amen. Keep reading. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Yahshua, the Messiah. And what he said, you have a simple, simple covenant. It's very simple. Obey me and I'll be your God. It's that simple. He said, however, I'm very afraid for my people that through the lust of the talk. Mm, my, my, my of that little serpent. Skew not to believe in God. The snake never asked Eve to be an atheist. Snake never asked Eve not to believe in God, but just to mix a few things in with God to make her more acceptable to the world. And he said, I am afraid for you that are in the covenant that you are going to listen to the snake and get rid of that simple covenant that you have because of a talking snake in your ear. <clears throat> it may be, it may be your mother. It may be your mother-in-law that looks at you when you say you don't celebrate Christmas and they give you the look of disgust. Be careful. There's a snake there that don't like your covenant. Mm -hmm. Because your covenant is a strange covenant. It is a covenant that separates you unto the word. Think that you're married. See, the problem is everybody thinks, I'm going to marry Christ. Not one of you in this room are going to marry Jesus Christ. Amen. You're, you're missing the whole thing. You're not marrying a man. Yeshua is the Logos. Yeshua is the word of Yahweh. Yeshua is the Torah in flesh. You are marrying the Torah. You are marrying the covenant. You are marrying the word of Yahweh. See, y'all all act like you're going to a wedding to get married to a man. What is he, a polygamist? Come on. Good stuff, Pastor. Any of you can't be married at one time. Is anybody even listening? Oh, yeah. We I all going to go marry Jesus. No, you're not. You're marrying what Joshua is. That's the Thank you, Laura. Thank you. I have it all wrong. Amen. I mean, how are you going to go marry Jesus? What are you going to do? Go on a honeymoon with him too? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, how far are y'all going to bring this thing? You see how our carnal minds think we're married. The marriage supper of the Lamb. 
Darling, that is Passover. You're marrying the covenant. You're not marrying uh, an entity. You're marrying what that entity is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor, Pastor, I love that because I was always going, yeah, because then that would make him gay. <laughs> Absolutely. And my and husband then, struggled with that. Yeah. No, I, I struggled with that a long time. Like a bride. What? That does, uh -huh. I, I, I'm a bride to the covenant. I'm a, you know, that's why in the book of Yahweh, so many of you get confused when you see it referring to Satan as a sheep. That's why, you know, so many people have written me, oh God, it says the devil is a woman. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. You've got to understand the word marriage is the word covenant. Any covenant relationship has to have a masculine and a feminine for it to be a covenant. That, that's why marriage is the creation of Yahweh. So therefore, Yahweh has the masculine role in the covenant with Satan that he had. Lucifer, the word there is a feminine word. So if you're going to refer back to a feminine word, you must use a feminine pronoun. You are in a feminine position in the covenant, but that doesn't make us all women. It makes us what feminine is a euphemism for what? Submitted. You're not the bride of Christ because you're a woman. You're only the bride of Christ if you are what a woman is supposed to be, submitted. Do you get it? Do you hear me? Yahshua is not marrying a woman. He is marrying a condition. I, I don't feel like anybody grabbed that. Let me do it one more time. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I get it. You just dropped it. We, we got it. We got it, Pastor. You're right okay. on. We got it. Thank you. We got it. Yash just need it. Yahshua is the law, the Torah. That's why they're going crazy over the chosen when he said, I am the law of Moses. He is the law. He is the fulfillment of that. He is that. The ma somebody say masculine. The law. Masculine. Submitted to the law, I not got it masculine, too. feminine. Now, do you see why Satan hates submitted wives? Do you see now? This makes more sense wow. than anything else. Wow. Do you see heard. why? This why he a... hates masculine men, masculine husbands, strong pastors that don't put up with nothing strongly? You see why he hates it? Because that strength yes, of the masculine. And that submission of the feminine is the only way you can have a covenant. All right. So yes, one day there's going to be a marriage supper of those that have submitted to the Torah, to the word. That's what the marriage is going to be. Okay. And then those in that condition of submission are being trained right now how to be submissive. Training Hallelujah. for reigning. Training for reigning. Schooling for ruling. The holidays you celebrate is just another class in your submission classes. In the school of submission, holidays is just your early morning class. It's just one of the periods of the day. Your holidays is just one of the periods of the, of the training class to come into the covenant of submission. Keep reading, Elder. Or if he that cometh Preacheth, preacheth another Jesus whom we have not preached. Or if ye receive another spirit which ye have not received or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. So 
If somebody comes preaching a Jesus born on December the 25th, that's a different Jesus than the one we taught you. Amen. He said, but you're, he said, I'm jealous over you because there's going to be seducers that bring you another, a baby Jesus wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger in a stable. He said, there's going to be three wise men there. Blah, 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 blah. He said, you are already in, you're already engaged to a covenant that Christmas has no part of. You are part of the Torah. And it's important that you understand that. We got to get past, I don't do Christmas. We need to find out today what you do do. Okay, if you don't do Christmas, Amen. instead of telling people you don't do Christmas, Tell them what you do do. Hallelujah. You do the covenant, and there's seven glorious holidays in that covenant, and you would love to tell them about it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We got to get off of this. I don't do Christmas. You know what? I tell you what. I'm so over Christmas. I found something better. Can I tell you about it? See? that Quit fighting Christmas against Christmas and fight for the covenant. Fight for what's contained in the covenant and tell people what you're for. If they're focused on Christmas, you ought to drive them crazy and say, are you coming with me to Passover? Oh, wait till you find out about how drive them up the wall with the days that celebrate the covenant. Amen. I, I really need you today to get the depths because if not, you're going to get We're stuck you. in why you don't do it. Well, I mean, for real, can we just be honest? Why does Yah a tree, Brother Vaughn? A tree? Yahweh hates a tree? Well, no, darling. He created the, the, the thing. He don't hate the tree. Okay. He created the tree, all right? He also created marijuana, but he still don't want you behind smoking it, okay? He don't hate the tree. He hates the intent. Amen. Hallelujah. He don't hate, he don't hate marijuana. He created. He also created poison ivy. <laughs> You don't need to be bathing in poison ivy just because he created it. It's not about the tree, darling. It's not about the music. It's not about the light. It's not about the reeds. You know what it's about? The choice. You didn't get that, so I'm going to say it again. It's not about any of those things. It's about the choice. Because do you know what happens at Christmas time? You, the, the second Eve, you're the second Eve. Adam and Eve, you're the second Eve. The bride of Yahshua is the second one. We've gotten a chance for a redo. Every at Christmas. This second Eve goes right back to those same two trees. One tree is the Torah, the tree of life, the covenant of life. The other tree is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That is the tree of death because any knowledge outside of Torah is death. And here we stand every year looking at those two trees and the snake is in the tree to get you to give up your covenant of salt. I'm going to teach you on the covenant of salt one day. The covenant that make that preserves you and makes you blameless before Yahweh. Satan wants you out of that covenant. Because he knows you're already betrothed to a husband. The Torah. You are in covenant 
And in that covenant with Yahshua, you celebrate Christ. You are in a covenant to become like your husband, the Torah. You are in a covenant to imitate him and to become Mizrish Jesus Christ, Mizrish Yahshua HaMashiach. It, to serve him, to obey him, to love what he loves, to hate what he hates, to be inwishable from his very person. You are engaged to be married to and Now, this particular guy that you've gone and gotten engaged to, the Torah, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That means everything about Yahshua is what? Truth. Everything about him is the way to walk in. And let me ask you something. What is more worthy of celebration? Truth or lies? Yahshua, the Torah, said, I am the truth. If you want to celebrate something worth celebrating, celebrate the truth. And you know what he did? He gave you a covenant and said, I'm going to give you celebrations that will celebrate me, your husband, the Torah, the truth, the life. I'm going to, matter of fact, I'm going to give you a celebration every week on the seventh day of the week to celebrate truth. And then I'm going to give you seven holidays every year for the people of the covenant to celebrate. And in those seven holidays, you won't find one lie. No, no, you won't find one lie. All you will find is truth. You'll find out about a blood sacrifice that you need for the propitiation of your sin. Oh, yeah. Worth celebrating, right? That's right. You'll also come to the next one and celebrate holiness, the days of preparation of Queen Esther. You'll celebrate those seven days that she was in preparation. With her seven champions, you'll celebrate that during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. You want to celebrate something? I'll give you something to celebrate. It's called truth. I'll give you a story. I'll give you a story, and I'll make it part of our covenant, you and me. And as a matter of fact, on the earth, I'll live out those same holidays so you can see which ones I like. <laughs> Yeah, I'll celebrate though. I, I tell you what, I'll I'll do Passover for you. That way you can do it. I'll do unleavened bread. I'll I'll show you what's in our covenant. This covenant's not for your neighbor, it's for you. The truth is, he's a soon coming king. Tell me one worldly holiday that celebrates that truth, one of a soon coming king. Only the holidays in the covenant. Remember, Paul said, I've already betrothed you. You're already engaged to another fellow. Why are you having an affair on him? Because you're more enamored with the cute Christmas. It's cuter. It's dressed up better. Of course it is, darling. He said, you're going to leave the simplicity of the covenant to go chasing after the newest girl in town because that covenant holds no value to you. I can tell you what you value by what you celebrate, beloved. Is anybody listening to me? Okay. I hope I'm not losing you. It's making good sense here, Pastor. 
Amen. Thank you, brother. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Love it. Thank Hallelujah. you, Pastor. Love it. Oh, That's what I needed to hear today. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so excited, Pastor. Hallelujah. I'm trying to bring it. Hallelujah. I'm trying to bring it out of the. Re- I'm trying to bring it out of the religious realm. What about Hanukkah, I'm t- Pastor? I'm, I'm going to Hanukkah. Hanukkah is one of the most beautiful celebrations. And we're going to explain why we do it here. You're welcome to do whatever you want to do or don't want to do. But I studied Hanukkah for nine long years before I finally kept it. And I'll explain why at the end of the service today. Now, if if I'm going to celebrate something, it's got to pass two or three tests for me. Number one, is it attached to the worship of false gods? in any way. I'm not talking about you went and found something on YouTube that nobody else can find, you know, you, oh, because if that's the case, we can make toothpaste pagan, okay? All right, but I'm talking about verifiable, you can look anywhere and prove where it came from. It's not just, well, I heard, no, no. It's got to pass the pagan test, okay? Number two, I have to know in my heart that it's celebrating a virtue that I believe in. A virtue, a principle, a core value that I believe in. For example, if they were to start a holiday tomorrow called Celebration of Live Births, you know, an anti-abortion day, Guess who would sign up to be at the celebration? Me. Why? I'm celebrating life, which comes from Yahweh. So, you know, no, that's not a biblical holiday. But if they said tomorrow, today we're going to celebrate the children of the world that was not aborted. We're going to have a great celebration for parents that chose to give life. I'm there all day long. You know why? I can show you in the scripture where I'm commanded to celebrate life. Now, here's another virtue that I believe in. Destroying paganism from God's church. So when I go read the story of Hanukkah, guess what that was? Obliteration of paganism in God's church. Is that something I can hang my hat on all day long? Okay? If I can't celebrate Hanukkah, then I can't celebrate Veterans Day. What was Veterans Day? Or what about D-Day? I can't celebrate D-Day? Of course I can not connected to pagan false gods at all. And it celebrates a virtue that's biblical. Giving of yourself, giving of yourself to others. That's biblical. Hanukkah is doing the same thing as celebrating D-Day. On D-Day, we got rid of the communists. Celebrate it. On Hanukkah, we got rid of the pagans. Celebrate it. Now, don't ever get to the point where you see paganism in everything. See, here's the problem. You can get too wrapped up. Paganism can be proven easily. If it goes back to the worship of false gods, that's paganism, okay? And I can prove that false God worship in Christmas. Now, I just want this ministry, I don't want you to be those people that see a pagan in everything you look at. Be balanced, okay? I mean, this cup may be pagan, I don't know. Well, it's got my image on it, so some people might could say that, I don't know. But the point is, Quit looking, find it, and then the Father will lead you. But when it's plain and obvious, avoid it at all costs. 
Seek Yahweh with oh. all our heart. Mm -hmm. Amen. Just love him. And, and brothers and sisters, if you mess up, repent quickly and move right ahead. Now, the spirit of Yahweh has commanded us not to observe the ways or the customs of the heathens. Now, I want to read you something. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 18, 2 and verse 4. Leviticus 18, 2 through verse 4. Go right ahead, Elder. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, I am the Lord your God, Yahweh. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwell, shall ye not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, Canaan, with whither I bring you, shall ye not do. Neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. Ye shall do my judgments and keep my ordinances to walk therein. I am the Lord your God, Yahweh. What you choose to celebrate will determine which covenant you're walking in, rebellion or obedience. And according to this, Yahweh says to my people, do not walk in the ways they walk. Do it. Don't celebrate the way they celebrate, but rather do my judgments. And what are his judgments? The Sabbath day, the holy days. Keep my statutes. In other words, hey, my wife, how about this? How about celebrate me? How about celebrate our covenant? Remember those seven little simple holidays I gave you that nobody wants to talk about? They're turned on by Christmas. But I didn't give you Christmas. I, all I gave you was Passover and unleavened bread. It, it, it was just a simple covenant that I just, I thought you might see the beauty and all of that and and that you would show up excited, but you're more excited about Christmas. I really need you to hear my heart tonight and hear what the Father is telling you. It's not about Christmas. It's about covenant. Which covenant are you in? Let's read Deuteronomy 8, 18 through 20. How many of you watching me right now? Let me just see a show of hands. How many of you watching me came into the covenant with Yahweh that you would obey him so he could be your God? Is anybody in that covenant today? Did yeah. anybody make that vow? Amen. Did anybody come into covenant? I, I, I hope. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Now you, Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. yes. Now I is am. that covenant? Is oh, yeah. that covenant worth celebrating or not? Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. That's why you don't have a choice. When it comes time for the holy festivals, he commands you to gather together in person, if you're able, with all of the rest of the covenant keepers to celebrate the truth in that celebration. If you yes. are more excited about a mistletoe mm. than you are the table of the Passover, oh, you're in a different covenant, darling. And we love you. We love you. We're not condemning you. Exactly. That's the covenant you're under. Not Some me. of us have changed covenants. That's all. You're in a covenant of death with Babylon. 
We chose a simple covenant. Yes, we agree it's not quite as dressed up as yours. We agree. We don't quite have the Bing Crosby singing our songs. We agree. We know that. But you see, some of us have found a treasure in simplicity. Mm -hmm. Mr. Oh, yes. Roger, I see you need to get a word out. Go right ahead. Um, brother, mine is more a testimony of my own life. Uh, when I was probably in my early 20s, uh, I gave my heart and soul to the Lord. And when I read the word, I read this, these things that you're teaching us today about his holy days. And the Lord said to me, but I gave you holy days, uh, yes. not the ones in the world. Oh, hallelujah. And then I read the commandments and I read about the Sabbath. And I knew that was God's holy day. But the whole world and the whole Christian world were teaching opposite things. They were observing opposite things. And I was weak. And I've been weak all my life. I'm now 81 years old. And I thank God for this ministry because it isn't a matter of knowledge. All those years, I had that knowledge that you were speaking of, but I did not observe. I was not obedient. Right. But I want you to know this year, there is no tree in my home. Hallelujah. There, and I have told all, when my children were small, because the Lord had shown me this, I told them these things that the world does, Santa Claus, Easter, and all these things are not true. They're made up things that the people do. And so they, I taught them that, but I did not teach them what God wanted me to see because I, I wasn't wise enough. But I thank God. I thank you. I, I pray. I know that knowledge is not enough. If you know oh, that these things are not of God, then you must leave it and be obedient as, as our brother is teaching us today. I thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Sandra. Wow, what a beautiful testimony. At 81 years old, Amen. coming into that submissive role, that feminine role. See, ladies and gentlemen, until you come into the feminine position, if I could be so crude, that position of laying down, surrender, until you come into that, you're not in the covenant of marriage. You're not in the covenant of obedience. And it will be determined by what holidays you do celebrate, which covenant you're a part of. Read Elder Morgan, and I'll come back to those that have questions. Deuteronomy 8 and 18 through 20. Everybody, let's read this together. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, Yahweh, for it is he that giveth thee power to get well. Now, Amen. let's ask that. How, how do we remember Yahweh? He said, remember me. Remember our covenant. He said, he gives you the power to get wealth that he may establish the covenant. But he wants you to remember the covenant. How do you do that? Well, how do we remember our veterans? Surely, we all love the veterans, but how many agree that you don't really remember veterans every day of your life, honestly, correct? In other words, they're not, they're not on your mind every day, are they? Not, they're not on mine because I'm busy. But every year on Veterans Day, I remember the veterans. Because you're given a reminder. Yes, sir. Yahweh gave you seven times to remember the covenant. And you may be super spiritual. Well, I remember it all day, every day. No, you don't. You work it. Come on. Amen. Okay? You're in the bathroom. You're not remembering no covenant. Right. But there are seven celebrations every year and one every week. That allows your mind to go back and celebrate the covenant, which is the Torah. Keep reading. For it, for it is he that giveth the power to get well. 
that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers, as it is this day. And it shall be, if thou do at, if thou do at all forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods, and serve them, and worship them, I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish. Can I break that down? Can I break that down for everybody? It's real simple. Whatever you remember annually, whatever you're remembering is what you will celebrate. And what he said was, if you don't remember the covenant with the seven holy days, you will forget the covenant. You'll forget your husband. You will literally have an affair, just like Eve did in the garden. She had an affair with a wrong way of thinking. And she cheated on her husband. And we do the same thing when the serpent convinces us, surely God didn't mean it the way you're reading it. That would be very cruel if that's how, surely you won't surely die, Eve. Surely when, when he said that, he gave some leeway. See, here's the problem. Surely God doesn't care if you celebrate a holiday. That's the voice of Satan. You better get it out of your head and say, it causes me to forget the covenant. Oh, hallelujah. He said, if you serve other gods and worship like they worship, you will forget the covenant of Torah. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 29 through verse 32. You just got to figure out who your covenant is with, saints. That's all. You got to figure out if it's with your mama, your daddy, and your cousins, or if it's with your elder brother. Amen. I'm trying, folks, to get this out. Deuteronomy 12, 29 through 32. When the Lord thy God shall cut off the nations from before thee, whether thou goest to possess them, and thou succeedest them, and dwellest in their land, take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them, after that they be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, how did this nation serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. Hold on. Even so, we're going to do it like they were doing it in their traditions and in their ways. Read. Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God, for every abomination to the, to the Lord Yahweh, which he hateth, have they done unto their gods. For even their sons and their daughters, they have burnt in the fire to their gods. What things soever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. I don't know how to make it any simpler. And I quote, inquire not after their gods. You already know that it was the God Tammuz and Mithras and all these other gods and soul Invictus that was born on December the 25th. You already know that. I'm not even going there today. Everybody knows it. Go watch Staley for all that. You know those things. So I'm not going to convince you of that today. All right. But he said, if you know odds and you say, we're going to do it in the same way. He said, you shall not do so unto Yahweh your God and dishonor our covenant. Oh, hallelujah. He said, don't go run off cheating over there and expect to crawl back in this house. And yet that is exactly what the whole Christian world has done. From the third century down to the present time, they followed the customs of the Egyptians, the Babylonians, and the Romans. They served God the way they served them. 
Uh, Brother Vaughn, what do you mean? I can, let me just break it down for you. They worship Jesus, Yahshua. I'm going to show you how they do it in the same way. How about on the same day? With the same tree? With the same mistletoe? With the same wreath? With the same Yule log? With the same candles? With the same feasting and gluttony? With the same merrymaking and gift giving? With the same frivolity? Do you know there's more affairs every year at the Christmas party than any other time of the year, darling? Whole sexual orgies going on at the Christmas parties. But it's all about Jesus. That's the way the heathens serve their son, God. And we have tried to honor the son of God the way they honor the son, God. I thought I just read a scripture that said, don't do it. God's never commanded us to do those things. We've just added to it. Oh, surely, Brother Vaughn, God is pleased with our Christmas programs. But here's what Yahweh said. Whatsoever I command you, observe to do that. Don't add to it or take away from it. God has shown beyond question his terrible displeasure with Christmas. You are literally standing in the garden, brothers and sisters, with two trees or two covenants to choose from. You can choose truth or you can choose lies. I want to read to you Revelation 22, 14 through 15. Everyone turn there. And I want to show you if you choose Christmas, chosen to celebrate a falsehood, a lie. You have chosen to celebrate selfishness. Christmas is the most selfish time and the greedy time of the year. Amen. It is selfishness is all it is. People out spending other people. Everyone trying to outpress with their gifts and this and that. And it's selfishness. It's all flesh. And it's all lies. Read for me, brother. Revelation 22, Blessed 14 through 15. Go ahead. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter in the gates Enter in through the gates into the city. For, with, for without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Hold on. Whoever loveth and basically celebrates a lie Amen. will not be part of the covenant. Christmas is a celebration of lies. Let's put it to the test. True or false? Christ was born on Christmas. True or false? False. He was born in a stable. True or false? False. 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 He was born in a sukkah, not a stable. Yeah. True or false? There were three wise men there when he was born. False. 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 There was a star over Bethlehem. When he was born, oh. false. Oh. Oh. There was a there was there was a star, but it wasn't the nativity scene that it did. That star was two years earlier. Amen. Wise men didn't show up for two years after his birth. When you go through the Christmas list that's in your nativity scene. When you pull up and you see Christmas, you're looking at lies. The tree is a lie. Amen. It's all lies. Let's, let's keep going through the Christmas list. 
Santa Claus, true or false? False. 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 Uh, come on, true or false? False. 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 He's false. making a list. He's making a list false. and checking his wife. True false. or false? False. 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 He he sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. False. 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 It's all lies, and you're the one that taught it to your children. Yeah. And we teach our kids not to lie. Now, let me ask you a question. Once your child finds out that you lied about Santa Claus, he can only wonder if you lied about his creator. Oh, that's right. On, that's child. right. True. It is the steam of the thing. True. Satan gets you to lie to these children so that they can grow up and he can convince them you lied about everything. Amen. Right. Right. Excellent. Sister Nicole, let's mute everybody. Now, I want to read for you. can't hear you, Pastor. You're muted. You have to unmute, Pastor. Let's go to Exodus quickly. We're going to go to the book of Exodus 32, 3 through 5. I want to show you something here that is truly, it was mind-blowing when the Father showed this to me several years ago. I want to read it. Exodus 32, 3 through 5. You all know the story of the golden calf. Read for me. And all the people break off the, the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hands and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods. O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, here is a picture of idol worship that was not meant to be idol worship. If you'll read this story, they were not trying to celebrate paganism. They were not trying to build a false god. They were trying to incorporate what they learned in Babylon with Yahweh. Because notice what they said. The reason we're building this is to celebrate the God that delivered us from Egypt because tomorrow is the feast day of Yahweh. The next day was going to be the feast of Pentecost. They were not trying to put a Christmas tree up because they love paganism. They were doing it in honor of Yahweh. That blew my mind when I, I was always taught they came out and built false gods. No, this was not a false god. This was a blended god. And it had an intent. You know how they tell you about Christmas? God knows my heart. Well, their heart was pure as driven snow. They said, tomorrow's Yahweh's feast day. Let's have a celebration. He's going to be born tomorrow, if you will. Amen. So let's just borrow the tree that we learned in Babylon. Let's borrow the gold idol, and let's do it for Jesus. Tomorrow's his birthday. Tomorrow's his day. We're not going to let the pagans keep this day. We're going to take it back for Yahweh. Just going to add, you know, some things we learned over there. That's all. But it made God furious. 
because they were denying the covenant that they were called to keep. God is a covenant God. Let's read Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 12. I'm going to ask you tonight, there's only two ways you can go. The straight way or the other way. When it comes to our holidays, we are not condemning anyone that walks that way. We have simply chosen to honor the covenant. Ezekiel 11 and 12. And ye shall know that I am the Lord, Yahweh, for ye have not walked in my statutes, neither executed my judgments, but had done after the manners of the heathen that are, that are round about you. Read that again, because I want everybody to just let that sink in for them. And ye shall know that I am the Lord, Yahweh, for ye have not walked in my statutes, neither executed my judgments, but have done after the manners of the heathen that are round about you. You have not walked in my statutes, but you have taken the practices of the heathen who live all around you. Ladies and gentlemen, any true Bible believer knows Christmas is pagan. And you know what? They even admit it. Do you know they'll even... They will surrender to you that it's pagan. But God knows the intent of their heart. That's right. Amen. hear that a lot. And that's what they said when they built that golden calf. They knew it was, it really was probably pagan. But tomorrow was a feast day of Yahweh. We've got to do something to celebrate him. So let's just borrow the tinsels of the world. But see, Yahweh had already given them in the Torah how to celebrate the day of Pentecost, and it didn't include a golden calf. But let me show you something about your history. Right there. In 1620, your forefathers sailed from England to Massachusetts Bay Colony. And they were all devout Bible-believing Christians, and they hated Christmas. And the Puritans kept their shops and schools open during Christmas, and they called Christmas Fool's Tide. They said it was for fools. The Puritans in England overthrew King Charles. The next thing they got rid of was Christmas. Parliament decreed that December the 25th should instead be a day of fasting and humiliation for what God's people had turned into. The Puritans of New England followed the lead, and in 1659, the general court of the Massachusetts Bay Colony made it a criminal offense to celebrate Christmas. Whosoever shall be found observing any day such as Christmas or the like, either by labor feasting, was subject to a $50 fine, which is what five shillings amounts to. You would, and if you didn't pay it, you went to jail for keeping Christmas. And that was here in the United States of America. Amen. When we started our nation, it was a crime to celebrate Christmas. And then they give their reason for it. The Puritans said it had nothing to do with the birth of Jesus, but rather Saturnalia. You already know all about Saturnalia. I'm not going there today. That's not my point today. It was an orgy. It was a time of, of Christmas parties and business office parties and I tell you, I'd be interested to know what business Christmas party you go to that's going to have anything to do with Jesus Christ. It's all lies. Quit celebrating it. It was a crime in the United States of America to celebrate such heathenism. To celebrate such things is to literally defile your covenant 
with your husband, the Torah. God is calling you today to make a choice, to decide where you're going to stand. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 10, 2 through 4. Jeremiah chapter 10, 2 through 4. Ready when you are, Pastor. Go right ahead. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the See, heathen, don't, don't go chasing after that young filly. Don't be in awe of her. Don't leave the, our covenant to go over there and be part of a covenant of death because she's prettier than this old simple covenant. Hallelujah. Don't have an affair on me and our covenant, which we've got seven wonderful holidays you can keep in this covenant. Don't go learn their ways. Just don't tell them you're going to be locked up in your house that day and you're going to be watching the uh, uh, Civil War series, whatever. Read. For the customs of the people are vain. For one wow. cutteth a tree out of the forest to work the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They, they must needs be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Neither also is it in them to do good. What has the customs of the pagans always been? Tree worship, sun worship, always. Now, if you don't understand what I'm saying, I'm not going to play this for you right now, but I want to suggest that you, when you get a chance today, go over to FHTV and watch right there my interview with a witch. In this interview, she tells you about the trees and every, the orbs and the, the star on top of the tree. This is their holiday and the pagans called and they want their holiday back. And you know what? I answered their call and agreed and I did. I gave it back to them. And I said, you know what? I've got seven good celebrations. You can have this one back. He said, they go out and they cut the tree, the holly tree, the evergreen trees. They bring them in their home and they, they worship there. Oh, well, Brother Von, see, that's the difference. I don't worship. Oh, I'm sorry. I could have sworn I saw you bowing down, putting gifts under it, and then bowing down to get gifts out from under it. I'm sorry. Bunch of dummies. I don't worship the tree. They crawl you behind. How much money did you spend on it? That's worship. You got more money on your tree than you do on your behind. You ain't pay that much for your clothes. No tree. Then let somebody tell you you can't have it and see how quick you worship it. Hallelujah. You do worship them. You bring your children, and, 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 and I tell you what, Brother Vaughn, I don't worship a tree. All right, hang tight. Hang tight. We're going we're gonna to get rid of that lie right now. I don't worship no tree. Low down, I just spent $4,000 on decorations for it, but I don't worship no tree. Let's find out. Listen carefully. Hold on, let's find out. Hold on, let's find out. Can't hear it, Pastor. Oh, oh, you can't hear it? Can't hear oh, it. Oh, you know why? I got to push the button. Hold on now. Hold on. Y'all don't go nowhere because uh, since y'all don't worship no tree. You have to share your sound too. Oh, okay. All right. Well, let's try it one more time. 
Yeah, I got to share the sound. There we go. Oh, yeah. Let's see now. We don't worship no tree. All right. I got you. I don't worship no tree. Okay. Well, we're going to find out. Hold tight. Let's see if we worship trees, everybody. Mm-hmm. I just can't stand the way the devil lies to people. Listen. Oh, Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree. How lovely are thy branches. Oh, Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree. How lovely are thy branches. My question, are you more connected to that than you are Asuka? Feel that soul connection from way back. You're more connected to that tree than you are a sukkah, a tabernacle. You do worship it. You can be deceived if you want to, but where your affections are, that's where you worship. That's where you worship. Now, I'm almost done today. I want to read to you a few things just so you know how Yahweh truly feels about these trees. It's more than just that one verse. Deuteronomy 16, 21 through 22. You shall not plant for yourself a tree of any kind of tree beside the altar of the Lord your God, which you shall make for yourself. He said, don't blend Worship with the Lord your God with these trees. And then uh, 2 Kings 17 and 10. And they set for themselves sacred trees on every high hill under every green evergreen tree. And then in verse 18, so the Lord was angry with Israel. Remove them. He will remove Israel. If she blends this worship, Genesis 21, 33 talks about trees. Genesis 35, 14. On and on and on. Now, you already know the wreath represents the vagina. The tree represents the phallic symbol of a man. They would bring the wreath down over the tree. Do I, I'm not going to go there today. It, it, it is what it is. It's all sexually oriented. It's all paganism. And every time you celebrate it, you have celebrated a lie and you have broken your covenant. I am jealous over you. Amen. All right. That's it. I'm not going to get into all. I, I could, trust me. I know what everything means. The star on top of the tree. I know, I know, okay? But hopefully you already know all that. Today, I wanted you to know something deeper. I wanted you to love the covenant and stay faithful to your husband, the Torah, the covenant himself. Amen.